Guys, oh, why do I have such good taste? <laughs> everyone and welcome back. So haul week has been and gone, it was a few weeks ago and honestly I think it was probably one of my favourite haul weeks of all time. I've never been so spoilt for choice and so undecided of what to keep and I had so many comments throughout the week with people asking me to do a what I kept from haul week video and to be honest with you guys I still haven't quite decided and the deadline for the returns is literally like in a few days. So I thought it would be really fun to show you guys my top top picks from haul week all of the things that have made it through the first round of auditions this is their recall and you guys can help me decide what to keep and what to send back so it's going to be a very interactive video i want all of you down in the comments giving your opinions on all of these pieces because i desperately need your help because i seriously can't decide so i'm going to try everything on again today and i'll actually style them up with shoes and bags and as always they will all be linked down below in the description box so let's get started as you can see i'm already wearing one of the pieces from the Abercrombie haul and I popped this on because I've just been really drawn to this like the past few days I've been thinking about it it's been on my mind because it's so pretty obviously it's gorgeous and so cute but it's also so comfortable I could be in my pajamas right now it's that comfy it's just one of those absolutely perfect wearable everyday dresses that requires absolutely no effort but it will always look beautiful. I feel like styling wise for this, I would just go super casual with my um, brown June slides and just a little matching handbag. This is my brown coach tabby. It's just every day, it's low key, it's low effort. Just the perfect everyday spring summer look. What do you guys think? I think the thing that I love most about this dress is the ruched bust and the way that it kind of has an empire waist and the puff sleeve. So it's quite like Bridgerton Regency. So it feels very princessy, but it's also very subtle and I just think the shape of the skirt and everything about it is so feminine and so flattering. I mean, for me, this is a no-brainer. I'm definitely keeping this right, but then again, I'm scared I'm gonna say that for everything. So pause the video, let me know what you think about the Abercrombie dress. Okay, so I thought it would be easier just to keep all of the brands together. So this is another gorgeous Abercrombie dress, although if you guys remember from the haul, it is in fact, woohoo, a play suit which I love. I just wish all dresses could have shorts underneath. I know it's not always the most practical, especially when going to the bathroom. But I don't know, it just feels so good to have shorts underneath. But anyway, I just love this so much. I feel like it's quite similar to the white one. And maybe I don't need both. But on the other hand, maybe I do because they're actually very, very different. I mean, they have the same beautiful princess puff sleeves, which I'm obsessed with. But look at the shape of this one and how incredibly flattering it is, like around the waist. It's just amazing. It's also got this really lovely, like soft v-neck with all ruching. It's just so pretty. Like the details on this are so subtle but so gorgeous. And obviously the color is just beautiful. It's like a proper Cinderella blue. I mean, honestly, how am I supposed to choose between these two? They are both absolutely beautiful and I love the way that the white accessories look with the blue dress. So I've just got my D&G crochet, um, flat bag, which I just think is amazing. And then I also just popped on my little um, white crochet mules that I got ages ago from Misguided of all places. And I'm not saying that to be a snob, we just all know it's not really my style, but I wear these shoes all the time. They just go with everything. They're so comfortable and they're just super, super cute. I just love this. And one of like my main takeaways from haul week is there were so many things um, that I really liked. I'm gonna say, especially from Zara that I really liked, but I just didn't feel good in them because they didn't quite fit me properly. They were like a couple of inches too too short and I really wanted to make sure that I kept things that made me feel really good really confident and really pretty and lovely and this is one of those pieces both the Abercrombie dresses this is such a good length like it's not too short for me at all which is really rare so what am I to do as it stands right now unless you change my mind I'm keeping both Okay, so this is the last Abercrombie piece and I feel like slightly more conflicted about this one because it's not like my usual thing. The other two are just like so me all over and this is actually my top from Abercrombie that I got last year, I think, and I feel like they were literally made to go together. Maybe they even came as a set last year and I just got the top and not the skirt. I can't remember, but they look so perfect together and I feel like this skirt is a very classic like spring summer wardrobe staple like something that you would have in your wardrobe forever that I may not wear every day but there will be occasions like holidays and events where I'm like oh my god that's the perfect skirt so that's why I kind of feel two ways about it and also I checked my order 
and this is actually a petite length so obviously when I ordered this the regular and tall were out of stock and they still are and I can't figure out if I think it's too um short or not so if you guys can see me in the mirror can you you'll see that it's like clearly not a full-on um, maxi, like it's grazing my ankle. It clearly is a bit shorter, but I don't really think it looks bad. And I just can't cope with how gorgeous this looks like with a little beach bag, little slides, sunglasses, like the ultimate glam, like French Riviera holiday vibe. I mean, now I've tried it on again and with like all the accessories, I'm feeling like it is a must have. This is so hard. I think it's justifiable also because it's a wardrobe staple, but please let me know what you think in the comments. Should I keep this? Should I return it? Do you think it's too short? Look in the reflection, like I don't think it's too short. I think it looks fine. And is the fact that I basically already have the matching top a sign? I'm gonna go with yes, but let me know what you think in your comments. Okay, next we have a few pieces from the Under the Stories haul, which is another really great haul. Like I liked more things than I was expecting to, including this dress. And guys, I do really like this, I do, but I feel like this may be the first thing that we can return. I think it's a beautiful dress, I really do. I feel like it's very Chloe. I said this in the video, especially when you style it up with like a Chloe bag. I also feel like my gold leather mules with the gold will look really good. And then I've also got my Chloe sunglasses. And I feel like when you put everything together, it does look really cool. I think it looks quite high fashion. And if I was going on like a Chloe trip, you know, to the Atlas Mountains, to Marrakesh, then I would totally keep this. But I'm worried that for every day, I would just not feel 100% like me and comfortable in this the way that I would with like the first two Abercrombie dresses. I think it's just a little bit out of my comfort zone with like the shape. It has this like really baggy fit. It has a drop waist, which is so not me. You guys know I'm all about the waist, but I do really like it. The fabric is so beautiful. It feels like a silk blend. It looks so expensive and luxurious. And in fact, I do think this dress totally has has a high-end designer look. I love the bow, I love the little fluttery sleeves. I'm just not sure that I'm going to get enough wear out of it to justify keeping it. So I need your serious advice on this one, guys. I will take your advice. Um, so please let me know if you think I should keep or return this. Okay, so next we have this dress and I'm feeling like this is a strong keep. I think this was actually my favorite piece from the Under the Stories haul. Oh my gosh, it's just incredibly beautiful. I love the fabric. It has all of these stunning little applique flowers. And you guys know, I love applique. I love when anything is like three dimensional in clothing. I love the sleeves. I love the way that it ties. I love the loose fit. I feel like it's very magical and fairy-like and it's kind of giving me the same vibe as the dress before, that like Chloe-esque luxury boho vibe, which I love. And that's why I've paired it also with my other pink Chloe test bag. Um, but this is just like more wearable for every day and I can see myself in this a lot more than the other dress. I just love how casual the dress is, but it has a really high impact because of this beautiful fabric. It's just such an effortless look and I can see myself wearing this. I also feel very drawn to this dress. Like I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since whole week. So that's why for me, I think this is a keep because I just feel so lovely in this. It's so comfortable. It's also a really perfect dress for those very British spring summer days where there's a little bit of a chill in the air because of the lovely long sleeves. And I just love it. I feel really pretty in it. I'm really drawn to this dress. So I think for me, this has got to be a keep. <laughs> okay, so next is another item that I absolutely adore, but I'm unsure and worried about getting the wear out of, and that is this beautiful blouse. I truly do love this. I think it's beautiful. I decided to pair it with my cream tweed LK Bennett shorts and my Chanel bag because it is giving me quite a Chanel feel um, with the satin and the big exaggerated three-dimensional roses. I do honestly think that this could pass for a vintage Chanel blouse, which really makes me want it, but I'm like, where am I actually gonna wear it? Is this an evening look? Is this a daytime look? Is it both? I can't quite figure it out. Also, the neckline is haunting me a little bit because I'm not usually a fan of this like straight neckline. It's very sophisticated, but maybe slightly aging for me. Um, but just let me know what you think. I'd be so interested to know your opinion. I think it's so beautiful. Like this fabric is just divine. Look at the way that it catches the light. It looks so expensive. These flowers just have 
my entire heart. I'm obsessed with the flowers. The way that it just drapes the body is so elegant and sophisticated and it looks so luxurious and part of me just really desperately feels like I need this in my wardrobe but then my head is telling me, Freddie, are you actually going to get the wear out of it? So please do let me know your opinions on this blouse because, oh my god, the more I talk about things the more I want to keep them so I just need to be like brought back to reality. And then the final piece from And Other Stories may surprise you as it is a long midi dress. I just love it so much. I think it's so pretty. I think it's flattering. It's so beautifully classic. I'm just in love with the square frilled neckline. I think it's so feminine and elegant. It's very wholesome. Does that make any sense? I feel like this is such a wholesome dress, but it's also like it accentuates your figure. It's not like a frumpy dress at all. It just feels like something else of a fairy tale, like a modern fairy tale princess dress. The only issue I did have with this dress is that the lining only comes halfway down and it is visible. And I'm like, oh, it's so unnecessary. Like, would it have been that much of a big deal just to make the lining full length? But I'm not sure if that's like a deal breaker. Is that enough to not like the dress at all and not want to keep it when the rest of it is so lovely? It really is just basket bag and slides all over. And um, these are the new white jean sliders, by the way, that haven't yet been worn. But this again is another beautiful, just casual, everyday low effort but high impact summer look that I can just see myself being so comfortable wearing. I also think that seeing as it is a midi dress it's quite a nice opportunity for some character development in Fred's wardrobe which is nice every so often for a little bit of um, wardrobe evolution. Not that you'll be seeing me in midi dresses exclusively anytime soon but this is one that I feel very me in. I feel very pretty and comfortable and I can actually see myself wearing this a lot but the only thing that bugs me is the lining. So again, let me know what you think. Is the lining a deal breaker or should I just go for it? Next, we have this little dress from H&M. And this is actually the only thing from the H&M haul that I am considering keeping. Oh my God, except the green and white striped swimsuit. I've decided I'm definitely keeping that because I'm actually going on a trip um, next week where I think that swimsuit will be perfect. But apart from that, it was just this dress. And I actually saw that during haul week, so many of you guys bought this dress and I can totally see why. It was really affordable. It's a total wardrobe staple with this simple elegant design and I feel like this is the kind of dress you can just throw on when you don't know what to wear. It's kind of occasionless which I really like because I feel like with lots of my outfits I assign like locations or occasions to them whereas this is just very neutral. I feel like you could wear this anywhere. Styling wise I'm thinking some little sling backs to match and then like a proper demure handbag just off the top of my head like I'm going to a coronation afternoon tea tomorrow and I feel like this would be such an adorable outfit although I need more blue and red but I don't really do blue and red guys. I'll have to get a little flag instead um but yeah I really like this dress and I think I think I want to keep this too because I just feel like I will actually get a lot of wear out of this. It's a very different style to the Abercrombie dresses that are very princessy and cute and girly. This is more like sophisticated, like when I want to dress a little bit more smart, a little bit more elegant, but it's still short and fun and cute. It also is kind of giving a little bit of 60s shift dress vibe because it has a slightly raised neck. So it's basically everything that I love in a color that just goes with everything in my wardrobe. It's affordable. I just feel like I would be stupid not to keep this dress right? <laughs> okay guys, moving on to ASOS, which was definitely the most surprising haul of the whole week because the last few ASOS hauls that I've done, um, I've really, really struggled to find those like super duper beautiful pieces that I just fall in love with. And this time there were so many, including this dress, which I have to say is probably the easiest keep of the whole video. I'm not even asking for your opinion, guys, because I don't need it. This is such an easy keep for me because everything about this dress I adore. I'm also thrilled because it's quite an expensive dress. It's only ASOS design, but it is one of their more premium pieces. And it's not that cheap, but I got a really decent discount on it and I can't remember why. It must have just been like a promo on the day. So for me, this is such an easy ass because as soon as I saw this online, I fell in love with it. It's just everything about it is so me. The waist, the full skirt, the full sleeves, the little frills and ruffles, the broidery cutout. It's just everything I love um, and I just know I'll get so much wear out of this. I'm thinking I could just go like full white out with this outfit which would be so cute with my little crochet bag and my crochet mules or add a little pop of pink with the Chloe Tess bag. In fact all of my bags I think would just go so nicely with this dress and all of my shoes. And you can also just push the sleeves up as well and wear them 
a little bit differently and like really puff them out. I'm just obsessed with this dress and I'm always saying this during haul week that I'm looking for those like really special one-off fabulous pieces that like the brand doesn't really do very often. For example, ASOS is not necessarily known for super cute, girly, pretty things. It's more like cool, edgy, on-trend stuff. So when I find something like this, I get so, so excited. And for me, I think this is just an absolute standout. It's one of a kind, it's everything I love in a dress. And I just know I'll get so much wear out of it. I am obsessed. Definitely the easiest yes of the week. <laughs> Okay guys, this dress was such a wild card even when I ordered it in the first place and I feel like it's even crazier that it's ended up in like the top picks of haul week because I just ordered it like because I liked the color I thought brown you don't really see a lot of brown I just feel like it's so different not just for me but just like anyone you don't really see this isn't like a super popular style of dress you see all the time it's very unique it has so many cute design details like a little lace-up corset at the back and all of the cutout and the beautiful pleats in the chiffon fabric the boning in the bodice the super severe square neckline with the super skinny straps I I just think it's so so cool and so gorgeous and I also feel really nice in it like I think it's super flattering but again it's just the question of where am I going to wear it and I always find this such a conundrum because I feel like with dresses like this this is clearly like a party occasion dress like I feel like this is the kind of dress I'd wear to a premiere but it's not like I have any premieres in the diary right now but also if I wait until I do have one in the diary this dress probably won't be available anymore so do you get it in anticipation for an event that might never come around so you might just waste the dress and never wear it but I also equally hate the panic I feel when I have an event and I'm trying to find something to wear styling wise I'd probably do my little strappy and other stories sandals and then my and other stories pearl bag I just think I think the pearls with the brown is such a vibe. So yes, part of me really wants to keep this because I feel like one day I will have somewhere to wear this to and I'll be so glad that I got it. But then at the same time, I do not have room to have things in my wardrobe that I'm not like actually going to wear. Let me know what you think because I really could do with your help on this one. So this is another ASOS design dress that I feel so compelled to keep because every time I've tried it on, this is the third time now, I just feel so good in it. You know, in a dress just like flatters you, it's doing things for you. I feel like this is just doing everything for me and I just feel so nice in it and confident and it's actually surprisingly comfortable as well. I feel like it looks uncomfortable because it's kind of like that twill cotton denim type fabric that's quite stiff, but actually it does have quite a lot of stretch in it. I had a dress like this kind of similar I guess um not as nice from and other stories but it was very stiff and very rough and hard and thick and it just wasn't comfortable at all but this one's actually softer and stretchier and most of all it has the most incredible sleeves in the world and I just don't think I have it in me to send this dress back purely because of the sleeves and also the shape so this is actually ASOS hourglass and I know some people will argue that I do not have an hourglass figure but I think I actually do it's like a soft hourglass it's not like a full-on Kim Kardashian hourglass but I do like undeniably have a waist that is proportionally smaller than the rest of me and that's why I think I love this dress so much because that's exactly how it's fitted it's so beautifully snug around the waist but there's still enough room in the hips for me to not feel like I have to walk like a Barbie I love the neckline I think it's so feminine and flattering and then these incredible exaggerated puff sleeves I just adore they're kind of giving a little bit of a corsage feel as well and dresses like this are just so easy to style all you need is a little pair of strappy sandals and then for a bag we could either go for just like a casual everyday bag like the coach tabby and then if I wanted to dress it up a little bit more I could wear my pearl tote bag so if anyone here knows of any reason or has any legal objection uh, as to why I should not keep this dress then speak now or forever hold your peace oh my god that's just made me think that this dress is actually really giving bridal vibes as well not that I'm a bride <laughs> Oh my gosh, guys, this video is actually impossible because how on earth do you expect me to return this beautiful forever new dress? I love it so much. When it was hanging up on the thing, I was like, hmm, do you know what? Actually, compared to the other stuff, maybe this is going to be one that I can let go of. But now I've got it on. I'm just like, how? It's so pretty. I've also just realized that I've done the bow at the front and I feel like when I tried the dress on the first time, I put the bow at the back, which is kind of cool. You can wear it both ways, but I think I actually do prefer it at the back. 
Do you guys know what I mean? I think it does look better from the front. I think it's more flattering that way and then it also gives the back a cute little detail if there's a bow there. This is yet again just another beautiful classic everyday wearable casual low-key look for spring summer that just oozes femininity it's so classic it's standout but not in a statement way it's like subtle standout it's just flattering it's classic it's pretty and princessy but it's modern oh my god all of the adjectives i'm sorry but i just really love the dress i love forever new as a brand the quality is so so nice again for styling i totally go with my and other stories strappy sandals i think they would just go so well with this dress because I said this in the haul but this dress super reminds me of Ariel's like shipwrecked look where it's like she's grabbed the raggedy old ship sail and just like fashioned it into a dress and I feel like the strappy sandals just go with that like rustic vibe it's just so pretty and again I can see myself getting so much wear out of this and really enjoying it I want to take this on my trip with me next week I just don't know how I'm expected to choose like give me one good reason not to keep this dress it's so pretty it's so wearable and I just love it. Okay, we are down to the final two outfits from two different retailers, starting with this incredible dress, which is of course from River Island. Did you guys see this coming? I was going crazy about this dress during the haul, and it did end up being the only thing that I felt like I desperately wanted to keep from the haul. It was funny because the River Island haul, I feel like I really liked everything. It was a really good haul, but when I put the clothes in comparison with like the other things that basically made it into this video, nothing quite matched up except this dress which I genuinely feel I must have. I just think it's one of a kind. It's so classic and simple yet this is just not the kind of dress you find anywhere because it's not trendy. This is so like retro 1950s which I said in the haul I feel like is such an underrated fashion era for women. Like it's so flattering. I think maybe the 1950s has like a bit of a stigma and is like frowned upon. It feels very like anti-feminist because of the whole like 1950s housewife trope. But actually who cares because I adore the silhouette, this beautiful fitted waist and this poofy skirt with the long length. So this is definitely like an occasion dress for me. It feels very bridal. And I was racking my brain being like, where will I actually wear this? And then it just hit me that I think I might actually wear this to Ascot because I've been thinking about my Ascot outfit and I said to JJ, I just don't think I'll ever be able to top the dress I wore last year because I just love that dress so much but obviously I can't really wear the same dress twice. And then it struck me that this would be perfect. It's perfect for royal enclosure because it's long and it's got um, nice thick straps. And then I thought how amazing it would look with my new headpiece from Miss Bean Millinery. She made this for me literally in a day for my Buckingham Palace garden party outfit. And I love it so much that I really want to wear it to Ascot as well. I mean, obviously I haven't done my hair properly so it's not perfect, but this is kind of what the look would be. And I love it so much. I think this is going to be my outfit and then I don't have to stress. And then it also gives me a good justification for keeping the dress because actually I probably would have ended up spending a lot more than this on an ascot dress so I'm technically saving money by keeping this dress oh and I definitely wear my pink LK Bennett um, ankle strap Mary Janes because I feel like that would totally add to the 1950s like prom look now I don't care what you say I'm definitely keeping this and so the final outfit of the video is this little two-piece from Zara and yes surprisingly this is the only Zara outfit that has made it into this video which is crazy because when I did the haul I truly did love everything but it was the first haul of the week and the rest of the week was so good and then when I put everything side by side I actually felt like most of the Zara stuff I could live without and another big factor was that a lot of the stuff I really liked actually were a little bit too short for me so they didn't look perfect compared to like the Abercrombie, the ASOS, the H&M dress which all had really beautiful lengths that really just flattered me. So the only thing that made the cut was this two piece, which I still think is absolutely stunning and absolutely perfect. And honestly, if I had endless space in my wardrobe, then I wouldn't even think twice about keeping this. But I think if I'm being sensible, Freddie, I do not need to keep two long white skirts because long white skirts are not really my thing. It's a little bit of a novelty for me, so I do not need two. And I'm just wondering which is the nicer outfit, this one 
or the Abercrombie one. Part of me does think this one is a little bit nicer, like design wise. This top I think is so flattering. I love the cup design and the little straps um, and it just really is beautiful. But I feel like the Abercrombie skirt is more versatile because the fabric is plain, whereas this is brodery. Also, the Abercrombie skirt, like with the tops, um, I would be more likely to wear at home in London, like on a hot sunny day, whereas this top is very like hot holiday hot climate to me. I love it, but it's not something that I think I would wear just like out and about in London. So even though I think this is kind of a nicer design, I genuinely feel like I would get more wear out of the other skirt and the other outfit. So I'll be very interested to hear which you guys prefer. So please do let me know in the comments which one you think I should keep. I feel like generally as well, I prefer Abercrombie's quality um, a lot over Zara. However, this does actually feel like really nice quality for Zara. Feels like maybe one of their more premium pieces. This is obviously a basket bag and sunglasses and slides all the way. So beachy, so summery. I also feel like I need a big wide brim straw hat with this. Can I be bothered to get mine down? Okay. <sighs> Oh my god, I hate getting my hat box up and down. I'm doing this for you guys because I love you. Oh my god, yes, we've either got this one here with the bow at the back or this one. I have no idea where this one came from. Oh my god, guys, oh, why do I have such good taste? No, because now I need this. I actually need this. Oh. My job is so hard. Guys, I'm officially all clothed out. I can't handle it anymore and I need opinions. I think I'm going to be so um, strict on choices, I'd say. My top picks were the first two Abercrombie dresses, the ASOS broidery dress, ASOS hourglass dress, forever new dress, River Island prom dress, H&M boucle dress, and other stories, a plique dress. And that might be it, but no doubt I'll be editing this video and get completely stuck again, so I'm going to be completely relying on your comments. So thank you very much in advance for your help. Thank you also, as always, for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye.